Now we have this basic creature that moves around. There's really no way of inducing variation in this particular animation. The wave modifier is animated, but none of these none of these variables in it can be tweaked and animated over the length of an animation. So I can't make the thing slow up or speed down, speed up or slow down. I can't make it happen at a different phase, etc., etc. There's not much I can do to vary the animation on this. Which means, if I had a scene with the hundreds of these creatures swimming, they'd all be swimming at exactly the same speed, at exactly the same phase. They'd all have their heads up at the same moment and down at the same moment, etc., etc. And it that might work if they were military creatures that were on the march, but it doesn't look very organic or real. We need some kind of randomness for that to work. And so we have to have some way of controlling this essentially uncontrollable thing. Now, there is a way to do that. And uh, I'll illustrate how you can do that in a second. And it looks a little bit unintuitive at first, but it's actually quite powerful and can be used for a variety of things. So I'll delete these for now. And let's look at this little guy down here. Now this guy isn't really moving at all. And if you look at this empty that I, this thing that I have selected here, it's an empty. And if we look at the outliner view, we'll find that there are quite a few more things on this layer that aren't visible. So I'm going to unhide them by hitting Alt-H and you can see these little eye icons came on so all the invisible things have been, been unhidden and you can see that some of them are unselectable as well so I'll make them selectable. So by the way in the outliner view for your scene you can make things hidden for instance, I can select this mesh here, and it's right here, and I can make it invisible. I can make it unselectable, so you can't click on it with the mouse and select it. Or I can make it unrenderable, so it doesn't show up in the final render. So, if you look here at these objects, you'll notice that one of them called Speed Control has a little armature icon next to it. So I'll select that, and I'll go into my Buttons window and you see we have an armature selected. Now the reason you can't see it here is because there's no bones on any visible layers. But if I unhide this layer, we'll see some bones pop up. Now this armature is being used to control the speed of the wave effect. Now I just said that was impossible, but it actually is. If you look at this bone in particular, and I move it up, you'll see that wave starts applying. And so if I move it up fast, it's going to move fast. If I move it up slowly, it'll wave slowly. So I just have to vary the animation of this bone to vary this effect of this wave motion. Now if you look at how we do that, I'll pull up this partition here, and I'll change this action editor. Make this the bottom. I'll change this action editor to an IPO curve editor. Then I'll select this lattice right here that has the wave effect on it. Now I mentioned that the wave effect can't be animated. It, it is an animated effect, but you can't animate it any, any of its parameters, such as its speed, for instance, or its time of starting. But what you can animate, it turns out, for a given object, is time itself. And let's explain that for a minute. Uh, there's, there's a time going through the scene as the frames increase, and then there's a time that's happening for the particular, uh, the particular object. Now you can create a time offset for things, so they happen later or sooner, but you also have a curve that you can edit that you can change how fast local time works on that thing. So you can essentially create like a time warp for an object and you can make it move slower in the scene even if it has the same animation on it as another object that doesn't have that time changed. So you think of that time as a curve. So if it had a one-to-one -one straight line here the thing would be at normal speed but you can change that line from the one-to-one -one 
position to a, a, a different slope to make it faster or slower. But more importantly for our purposes is that this time curve that you see here can be driven. Now we've seen driven keys in man candy used for driving shape keys on the face where the shape, uh, the shape of the face was driven by the motion of a bone so that you could have more smile if you moved the bone in one direction um, or less smile if you moved it in the other direction. Well, if you replace smile with time, then you have effectively the same thing on this lattice. So the position of the bone here drives what time is it, what frame it is for this lattice. And that's how we control the wave uh, motion. So you can see we have this curve here with a one-to-one -one mapping. And then we have a driver added to it. And the driver's object is speed control, which is the name of the armature. And it's using the swim speed bone as the target. It's using pose mode. And it's using its Y location. So as we move the bone in its local Y direction, we affect what frame it is effectively for our lattice. And thus, we can control the speed of the wave. So that's pretty cool. And 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 that that that's really how we can introduce this variation so we ha if we have multiple copies of this we can create a lot of variation in how fast things go now that isn't the only variation that is available on this armature on this armature there's another bone back here and what this bone does is allows bending the um the tail around and it still works you can still have a wave effect on that curve at the same time. So if I, for instance, temporarily delete this driven curve here, so this thing will we'll just remove the driver, so this thing waves, you'll see that bending this doesn't affect the wave itself. Now let's re return our driver here so we don't destroy anything and so we have a bendy tail as well and just to show you how that's done is that there's a curve object here and this mesh has in addition to the lattice modifiers we showed earlier a curve modifier on top that bends the final result along the curve the curve is a simple Bezier curve and that Bezier curve if we look at its modifier stack, has a hook with this empty as the target right here. And that empty is parented to this bone. And so that's how that works. So it's fairly simple. And it allows us to animate the general attitude of the tail as well as the speed and phase of its wave motion.